Well, I got into the field of psychotherapy after having um, a brief time, a career with family planning. Mm -hmm. And I did family planning counseling. Um, what I found there was that I was often um, uh, meeting people at times of crisis and that there was only a very little that I could do to be helpful to them. So I uh, decided to take graduate study in uh, psychotherapy. And then I found in the field of psychotherapy that there were also great limits to what I could do to help people. We have focused for years and years on the chemistry of the brain. And we have done that in part, it was, it was serendipitous. They were investigating a, a drug for, um, uh, as an antihistamine that turned out to, to be Thorazine. And Thorazine was used then uh, as a major tranquilizer for people. Uh, and it began the age of uh, psychopharm for, for uh, well, psychopharm for, for mental illness. Um, it was at about the same time that people were discovering that you could change the experience uh, that people had by changing the way their brains fire, which is what we do with neurofeedback. But there's no money in uh, changing the brain uh, electrically, and there is billions of dollars in changing the brain or attempting to change the brain chemically. The problem with the chemical paradigm is that we've now been using drugs for 30 years and there is uh, no data that people are healthier. Uh, in fact, the statistics on mental illness and on suicide are terrible. Uh, there's been no improvement, even with all of the psychopharm. So, there's another approach, and all too few people understand that there's another approach, but there's another approach. Um, I became a neurofeedback practitioner after dinner with a friend of mine, Kathy Zilberman. Uh, she was investigating this, to me, brand new thing uh, called neurofeedback that seemed preposterous. I was then the clinical director of a treatment program for uh, severely disturbed adolescents. And what she was saying to me essentially was I could treat them by having them play a video game with their brains. This seemed to me to be a kind of high-tech snake oil. Uh, but she had a, a lot of credibility with me. So uh, I volunteered to be her first uh, subject for her experiment with neurofeedback. So when she got her equipment, we start. We did a couple of trainings. So I went down and we trained for um, over a weekend, maybe seven to eight hours. This is not a recommendation at all. I'm not suggesting that anybody else do this, but it is the way I got into the field. And we did. Um, uh, we did a, a training it's called SMR training. There are different frequencies that you can reward in neurofeedback, and this was the one that we rewarded for, uh, for me to relax. That afternoon, Sunday afternoon, after I had done this, I went to see a movie. The movie had a very violent scene in it. I had a powerful reaction to that violence, atypical reaction. I had to leave the theater nearly got sick. It was, it, was, it was very clear to me that something had changed dramatically. I walked home in the evening as the light was getting to be this beautiful indigo, and I noticed how beautiful the light was. I noticed all of the lights coming on in people's apartments as I walked home. I could feel with a new sensitivity the, the uh, air on my skin. And I said, I know that I have a pressured speech. I know that I'm moving very fast. I know that I sound hypomanic. But I have to tell you that beneath all of this, there is a feeling of calm and quiet that I have never felt before. And I think that the migraine and the 
pressure in my speech and the sort of manic presentation is all going to be gone on Wednesday morning. Sure enough, Wednesday morning, it was over. What I had uh, begun to experience was a great reduction in a background ambient fear that I had lived with for my entire life.